Welcome to the SAP HANA Academy. My name's Bob and in this video tutorial series we'll show you how to build an end-to-end -end solution in HANA 2.0 based on a live Twitter feed. In this video we're going to look at continuing to build our calculation view which is going to be eventually used by our OData service. In the previous video we looked at aggregations, calculated columns and filtering. Make sure you've seen that video, which is a precursor, of course, to this one. In this video, we're going to look at joining data sets together. And we'll do a left join because we want to have the data from the first aggregation, but we want to know if the token that is in aggregation underscore one has been identified as unambiguous profanity, in which case we're going to change the value of the token to five stars. So let's do a join. We'll put that somewhere between the aggregations and the central aggregation pointing towards our semantics. And then we're going to connect our two aggregations to that join. It's a good idea to take the aggregation that you created first and join it to the join underscore one first. Then you'll join that second aggregation to your join as well. So I'll just select that join icon and then drag it to join underscore one. So now when you select the join node, you'll see both the aggregation underscore one and the aggregation underscore two. So firstly, we need to select the TA token from aggregation underscore one. And using the arrow, we can just join that to the TA token on aggregation underscore two. Now we don't need to join on TA type and also we don't want to join on TA type because then only the unambiguous profanities will be outputted in this calculation view because of course it will get filtered. Now, what we want is if it's a profanity and it's also found in negative sentiment, we want that to be filtered. So that's why we only join on the token. Now we're going to perform a left join. So you'll see at the bottom, you can change that option within the join type. So if we select that join type, we're going to select left outer, making sure that the left join is aggregation one and the right join is also aggregation two. So when we've done that, we're going to create some calculated columns. We're going to create a few, in fact. So firstly, what we're going to do is rename that TA type column to something more meaningful. So I'm just going to rename it to have the case lowered. So I'll create myself a new calculated column. I'm going to call it type. Notice that it's lowercase and we'll make it at an nvarcar 100 to match the original. And within the expression, with the SQL expression editor, we're going to put TA underscore type in uppercase, of course, surrounded by double quotes. We'll also create a second calculated column. It's kind of the same steps. This one's going to be called token as lowercase. And this will, of course, be our finalized cleansed token. This one, again, will be nvarcar. And we'll make the length 5000, which again matches the input. Now, when it comes to the expression, we're going to add one. But this time we're going to use the column engine expression editor. So make sure you select column engine here. You can do that by clicking on the two options for language and selecting column engine. Of course, you can type the code in yourself using these elements, functions and operators. But we can go and get the code from our GitHub repository, which is line three in that file. So I'll copy that. I'll go back to Web ID and I'm going to paste it in my expression editor. Firstly, we have to use the column engine editor because we're using if and is null and these two bits of syntax don't exist in SQL. And what you'll see is we're saying if the TA token underscore one is null, then we want to use the TA token column. Otherwise, we're going to replace the token with five stars. Now you're probably thinking we only see TA token here. So where does TA underscore token underscore one come from? Well, we get that from doing a mapping. So if we go to that second tab, which is mapping, you'll see that we've got our various data sources. Now we need to make sure we map all of these input columns so we can create some calculated values on them. So you can select individual columns. So here I'm dragging TA token, TA type, I can also select the counts. Of course, you can also select the actual whole data source, which will select all the columns. So here you can see that TA token, because it comes from aggregation two, has been renamed to TA underscore token underscore one. And that's why if we go back to our calculated columns, what you'll see is that I've put in, in the isnal 
part of the syntax TA token underscore one. So now we have TA token from the left hand table and TA token underscore one from the right hand table. So just to recap, we're going to say here, if the TA token underscore one, which obviously comes from that right hand table is null or isn't found, then it's not got a profanity in it. So what we'll do is we'll take the TA token from the original table. However, if it's not null, of course, we'll replace the token with five stars. So to finish off, all we need to do now is join our join underscore one to our aggregation. So we'll select the join underscore one, we'll select the arrow, we'll point it to our aggregation. Then what we'll do is we'll select the aggregation and we need to select our column. So we'll select type, token, and the count. And we can actually ignore all the other columns. They're just used in syntax, in functions. The only thing you should do is select the count and make sure that the aggregation behavior is set to sum. This is because we want it to be summed dynamically as we filter and use it in our OData service. So that's all we need to do. So if we go to our semantics, there's nothing that we have to change here. Everything's been automatically taken care of further down. So we'll just click on save. So I'll reset it to default. And then what I'll do is I'll right select text analysis and I'll select build selected files. It's going to take a few seconds to build. So when it's been built, we can go and test it. So to test it, you should get obviously no errors here. What we need to do is go to our database explorer. So what I'll do is I'll close this um, calculation view. We'll go to our database explorer and then we'll need to select our column views because when you build a calculation view, it's actually a column view. This is the view that you've built dot text analysis. You'll see three auto generated views for each of the columns in the view. And before we do some exploration, let's go and change our settings here, which is the third option. If we go to Database Explorer SQL Console and we scroll down, let's change the maximum number of rows displayed and we'll change that to 5,000. It means we'll get more data here when we look at the results. And lastly, don't forget to click on Save. So now if we go back to the Database Explorer, we can start to look at the data. So within the column view, what I'll do is I'll select text analysis and I'll right click and I'll choose open data. The first thing you'll see is on the top right hand side is that we're outputting 5,000 rows. In terms of the data, we have our type, our token and the count of each which has been mentioned. Now, if we filter, we can go and look at the profanity. So if I select the type and if I click on the drop down, the specify filter value, you should be able to find unambiguous profanity. Now, if you can't, don't worry too much because what we can do is we can specify the value on the right hand side. So here I can go and paste in or type unambiguous underscore profanity in capitals. I'll add it as a selected value and I'll click on OK and I'll click on finish. So here we can see we've replaced 82 tokens with the five stars. And again, that's just to make sure that we're not displaying the most offensive types of profanity within our UI. So now that we've built our different types of views, we've built a series of column views using CDS syntax. And we've also built a singular calculation view, which will be used by our old data service. What Phil from the team is going to cover in the next video is the concept of clustering. So we're going to use that users column view, which we built in the previous video and we, which contains the three columns stance, influence and abuse. And we're going to look at clustering and the predictive capabilities within SAP HANA. You can find more SAP HANA video tutorials on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to be informed as soon as new video tutorials are published, please subscribe to our channel. You can also connect with us on LinkedIn, follow us on Twitter, and we have pages on Facebook and Google+. Code snippets for all of our tutorials are also published to GitHub. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, please leave us a message in the comments and perhaps give us a like. Thanks for watching.